This is the beginning of my video which is entitled How My Interest in the Clothes Washer Became My Interest in Plumbing Part 2 Resumed from the ending of my video How My Interest in the Clothes Washer Became My Interest in Plumbing Part 1 but this time, I was not surprised to feel this strange, glittery, enchanted kind of feeling because I knew where I had felt that feeling before as I remembered my first experience with the clothes washer. However, I was surprised to feel that pleasant, enchanted feeling about the water hose as I remember how, in the immediate aftermath of that first experience with the washer, I had been so afraid that I would never again find anything, anywhere, that was as pleasurable as the washer. And now, in spite of the fact that the incident of my mother washing the car with the hose had not been as fun as the times when my mother used the washer, the incident of my mother washing the car with the water hose had been fun enough to even begin to compete with the washer so as to have already done something that no other thing that I considered to be a pleasure activity could even come close to doing. Now I do not remember how many car washing incidents it took, though I do know that it was not many, perhaps only one or two more. But in any case, it was not long after that first car washing incident when I was again outside on the front lawn of the house alternately running around on the grass next to the driveway and watching my mother use the hose. And as I thought about that interesting nozzle with the lever that controlled the water flow from the hose, it really struck me as to just how closely the pleasure of watching my mother use the water hose compared to the pleasure of watching my mother use the washer even though washing the car with the water hose and using the washer to wash clothes were two completely different chores. Or were they? At that moment, I had the weird sensation of seeing myself as though I were someone else watching me from a distance and analyzing my behavior from an outside perspective. And already an overarching behavioral pattern was beginning to emerge. The one thing that my mother's chore of using the washer to wash clothes in the laundry room and her chore of using the water hose to wash the car in the driveway very conspicuously had in common was that both of those chores involved the use of water. Almost as though that outside person were trying to figure out how to quote unquote help me and nurture me in accordance to the patterns of behavior they were already seeing in me based on just those two facets of my behavior, I began to wonder if my interest in the clothes washer and my newfound interest in the water hose might possibly be bigger than both. What if the washer, the water hose, and even the kitchen sink were not lone standing entities in and of themselves, but instead were connected in some way to a super realm that united them all together in their own category. And what if this interest I had in the washer, the water hose, and the kitchen sink would ultimately turn out to really be an interest in this abstract super realm that, if I were to find out that it existed, it would not be confined to a room, such as the laundry room, for example, or to any other place or thing that could be seen and touched, but which would exist wherever its precious water pipes and hoses, and anything else which might be associated with those water pipes and hoses, could be found. And what if my interest in the clothes washer and in the water hose that my mother used to wash the car was only indicative of the much greater level of pleasure I would find in exploring this super realm and in continually coming into an ever greater knowledge of the immeasurable reaches of its height, breadth, and depth in the same way that I wanted to know the washer's deepest secrets. I knew that if this were true, I would ultimately find myself being interested in anything else that I would happen to find in the house that used water and which had pipes in addition to the washer, the water hose, and the kitchen sink, not in reference to how they related to the washer, but instead in reference to how they related to this super realm, which they would turn out to be just as much a part of as the washer and the water hose were. But the most shocking and astonishing thing 
that this super realm hypothesis caused me to realize was that there was more than just a distinct possibility that I had had it all backwards and that I could not have made a greater and a more ridiculous mistake than to believe that the washer's pipes and hoses were the washer's exclusive property that was up for grabs by the kitchen sink or anything else that might want to steal those pipes from the washer or blasphemously copy them otherwise. I was now quite sure that not only had the kitchen sink not stolen the clothes washers or the laundry room's water piping, but that the laundry room had not exerted itself over the kitchen and the kitchen sink either. It very shockingly occurred to me that this whole pipes outside the laundry room business was not a matter of what room ruled over what room or what piping had been stolen by what because the washer's piping did not even belong to the washer in the first place and never had. Instead, the piping that I had only thought was the washer's piping, and that I had only thought was the unique trademark of the clothes washer alone, was really, quote unquote, owned by this super realm, which had bountifully and without reservation shared its piping, not just with the washer, but with the kitchen sink as well. Just what else, in addition to the clothes washer and the kitchen sink, had this super realm graciously served with its piping, that I did not yet know about. It was obvious that the clothes washer had been only one of the items which this super realm had shared its pipes with, and so I knew that I did not need to have any fear of finding the quote-unquote clothes washer's piping in areas of the house that were both physically and situationally far removed from and totally unrelated to the washer. After all, just what was this war hose that I was watching being used by my mother? It did not have anything to do with the washer, but it still was a hose nonetheless, which I thought might prove my super realm hypothesis to be correct. As a result, the bulk of my attention was no longer on the present moment of my mother using that water hose in the driveway because I just wanted to be able to get back inside the house as soon as possible and search its every single room to find out just what I had been missing all along. As a result, I had no regrets about the car washing incident coming to an end and my mother putting the hose away for as soon as I was able to go back inside the house with my mother, I embarked on the most premeditated, planned, and detailed search that I had ever made for anything up to that point in my life of about three and a half years. I had to search for absolutely anywhere there was a basin, like the wash tub in the laundry room or the sink in the kitchen, as well as the smallest place where a pipe or a hose could be hidden. And so, this was how I had no regrets whatsoever about the car washing incident coming to an end and my mother putting the water hose away. For as soon as I got to follow my mother back into the house, I went on a search of the entire house so as to execute the most premeditated, planned, and detailed search I had ever embarked on up to that time in my life when I was perhaps three and a half years old. My search excluded the kitchen and the laundry room because those rooms were already familiar to me. However, I searched every other room in the entire house, knowing that the fact that I was searching for a realm instead of a place meant that I could find pipes or hoses in places where I did not have any logical reason to suspect their existence, and even in places where their juxtaposition with unrelated objects might make their presence seem ridiculous. In only a short time, my search moved in a progressive, orderly fashion into the hallway, which contained the bedrooms and the other rooms in that half of the house. For I knew that, even though all of those rooms were familiar to me, I had never searched them specifically for pipes, and I was aware that I was now searching the house with a completely different outlook which might enable me to find things that I had missed before. Meanwhile, I was aware that the fact that I was searching for things I did not even know existed meant 
that I had to have some rules of logic in place to help me to find those things. To that end, it seemed that the physical properties of water itself was one of the most critical things I had to take into consideration because water naturally flowed downward into any container it was flowing into and then once it was in there it stayed in there until it was scooped out with a cup the container was tipped over or the water drained out the bottom of the container through a hole of some kind including a drain another critical fact about water was that water naturally did not have a shape of its own but could fit into any hollow space that could accommodate it in the background of my mind was the fact that because of this any container that was meant to hold water was likely going to be circular instead of square like the washer tub for example because a circular container was going to be awkward for holding solid material that retained its own shape in addition the fact that pipes were a tool for managing water meant that wherever I would find water I would find pipes as well, although the reverse was also true in that wherever I found pipes or hoses, I might also find water, or else a hollow space into which water could fit. And so, in essence, I had to look for anything that even remotely looked like it could hold any quantity of water, especially if it looked like it was built into the walls or the floor of a house, as opposed to something sitting on a tabletop such as a cup or a bowl that could be picked up and moved around but not only did it have to be hollow its sides had to be completely solid without any holes in it where the water could spontaneously flow through and drain out of course due to the fact that water didn't naturally flow upward without the assistance of an outside force the top of the container or basin could be completely open in addition, if a container that was hollow did not look conspicuous in and of itself, a water faucet located on top of it, or a pipe located near it, would be a dead giveaway. And so I also had to look for the combination of faucets along with basins in their proximity, which might be intended to be filled by those faucets. So that was how I entered the bathroom halfway to the back of the hallway. I had already been in the bathroom many times, especially for diaper changes and toilet training along with the occasional bath in the bathtub. And so the bathroom was a room that I was already familiar with along with the fixtures in it. However, since I was searching the bathroom specifically for water pipes and basins in a way in which I had never searched the bathroom before, I knew that this time would be different than any previous time I had been in the bathroom. To that end, the first thing I saw upon entering the bathroom was the bathroom sink, complete with the faucet on top of it. However, the sink sat on top of a wooden cabinet which reached all the way to the floor and which had a single door on its front in a way which resembled the two doors on the cabinet that contained the kitchen sink. Without hesitation, I opened that door. When I looked into the cabinet, I saw the enclosure of the inside of the cabinet. And sure enough, there was a chrome-colored pipe inside that cabinet that looked exactly like the pipes under the kitchen sink and like the pipe behind the washer in the laundry room as well as the pipe under the wash tub in the laundry room. But unlike the pipes under the kitchen sink, which seemed to have two different points of beginning, this pipe in the cabinet which contained the bathroom sink had only one beginning. This pipe began at the central bottom of a large rounded upside down dome at the top of the cabinet which I realized that time was the bottom side of the sink that I always saw from above outside the cabinet. The chrome colored pipe began at the center and lowest point of the bottom of the dome and then went straight downward for a short distance before curving around and upward in a loop that resembled the loops under the kitchen sink and the laundry room wash tub. This is the ending of my video, which is entitled, How My Interest in the Clothes Washer Became My Interest in Plumbing, Part 2. Go to my video, which is entitled, 
How My Interest in the Clothes Washer Became My Interest in Plumbing, Part 3.